what's up all right so we're gonna try to uh draw uh one of my little bardito today all right so before i start i i'm just warning you that yeah i'm gonna use a reference picture but the goal is absolutely it's not to um to replicate the reference picture far from it it's just i take it as a base so that i have uh a believable pose and, and bird structure and then I I guess I cutify it I just push the proportion keep the thing that I like that, that I find visually interesting and just yeah just change it until uh, it looks cool to my to my taste basically right so let's see okay so that the bird I've chosen for today. I think it's a cool pose. It's looking back. He's laying on a vertical branch. I think it's gonna make for a for a cool design. Okay, so the program I'm using here is uh, Leonardo, which is my favorite um, program to make uh, lines. I don't know why, but somehow uh, it gives me the best uh, the best line. It's just I don't know, it's really cool. It's still in beta, not a lot of people know about it. And it's rather cheap, I think. I don't remember the, the exact price because I got it a while ago, but I think it's something around like 30, 50 bucks. And uh, yeah, try it out. I think there's a, there's a free trial that you can try for a week or two to see if you like it before you buy. Certainly beats paying the monthly Adobe fee, so. I would really advise you you try Sketchbook and this program before uh, before trying a ton of money on uh, on Adobe. Just make sure that that you like digital drawing before uh, before buying this. Okay, so let me show you my hand. I think it's so weird. Right, so when I start uh, a bird, the first thing I do, I always try to find the axis that uh, just go through the body. So that's the first thing I draw. The main axis, just the inclination of the bird. It, it just allows me to uh, to anchor my my drawing to more easily uh, balance all the elements. It's, it's a nice uh, reference point. Then I find the two main curves, which is curve of the belly here that naturally leads to the curve of the top of the face. Actually here you could say that it's kind of a whole C curve the bird. Yeah like that. I like that idea that it's just a big a big C. You always have to try to find a abstractions when you draw. So when I have this uh, this main curve, usually it's two, but you know, like one that leads to another one, but that means somehow here, it's just yeah, like a single a single curve. Again, then at this stage of the drawing, I'm I'm really I'm I'm super rough. I don't really care about uh, getting the a super precise line. It's just a base. To, uh, well, just the structure of my drawing, really. the initial structure. So here, what I do this is the second step. Well, third step: first the axis, then the curves, then the axis of the the beak and eye, and the axis of the tail. So axis of the tail, something like that. Yes. Yeah. And. And I close. Okay, I'm fine if you don't like this. Actually, it's always correct as I go along. Let me see. But now I'm looking at uh, basically at, at, at this shape here, and I see it just wasn't there, so I'm, I'm modifying. Then I'm looking at this shape to be messing up my drawing. 
I'm gonna try to replicate it here more or less. It's just a question of verifying that everything is known. Because this one, I think so now, well, maybe I should go a little bit higher here. And then put the bit higher. I mean, it's getting very messy, but I just do it. Is. Then I need to erase this. When I say that, I try to get the, the wind, so bottom of the wind, something like that, something like this. And I block it so I can. Oops. This is getting, getting super messy today. I just like to, uh, I don't know, I like to draw trashy for my first uh, pass. It allows me to find nice relationship, nice curves. And yeah, I don't have to worry about it. making it pretty. Because... But it, it's true that it's getting a bit, uh, a bit chaotic, let's put it like that. Right, let's clean this up a little bit. I'm going to create another layer, reduce the opacity of this one. And uh, I'm just clean it up a bit. I'm just I'm gonna keep all the construction lines so so it makes sense. That messy curve. Finish like that. Peak. And then, well, well I'm just. Put everything that I have. Put it close. Clean it too. Triangle under the tail. I forgot in the. I usually, this is also an axis that I get for the, my first pass, during my first pass, which is the axis of the, of the, um, the leg. I'm gonna try to keep this one very, uh, very simplified so that it doesn't attract much attention. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the eye, so I just actually check more or less where the eye is, so the, compared to the other element, I'm putting a, Vertical line. Then do the big. Okay, this is something that I said in my previous video, but I repeat it again because it's super important. In the human face, well, us humans have a tendency to um, anthropomorphize the items and uh, the animals that we. Meaning that we are, we, are, we apply um, human characteristics to um, to animal and objects because we just used to you know to ourselves to to look at how well, we see each other and ourselves all all day long. So somehow unconsciously we just always uh, tend to apply uh, human feature on human things. So humans have a the eye over the nose. And usually, well, a very common mistake people do when they, they draw birds, they put the eye here, and it looks just very weird. It looks just completely unbird like with where the eye actually is located. Is. So you get the beak, and it's just on the axis of, of the beak, like this. A little bit high, not, not exactly on top of it. Though some birds do have it like that, it's just slightly on the up top. And okay, here I've actually placed poorly. Like the Eye of human is like forward, really, whereas the bird is a little bit more uh, inside of the face. I, I don't know. So, okay, so what was on? There, okay, so now I'm gonna use the natural, um, well, the feather blockings to, um, to 
to separate into interesting shapes. So like one very important, uh, okay, let's start with the face. Face is just the crown, which is this thing. Like sits on top of the eyebrows here. So I concentrate on this shape here. Like I have to, this little triangle here. And I try to make it look as cool as I can. I don't know, this is still part of the crown, but it's like the change of direction that I'm trying to uh, to show. Then around the eye, we've got, how do you call it again? The orbital feather, I think. Just a, a little, tiny little feather around the eye. That, but here you don't see it that much, but yeah, well, you can see it. In some birds, it's got a different color, so it's, it's like a nice thing to uh, to see. You got the eye here, and then this and the feather around here. I just like to uh, to show that, especially if it changes uh, color. Then the eye around the eye, you've got this grouping of feather. I think they're called. Uh, Actually, I'm cheating. I got my boot next to me, and I pretend I know shit, but I'm learning as I go. This is the su supra laurel feather, and then under it you've got I don't know, just this this feather. I think that's where the the ear of the bird is located around around here. So I call like the auricular auricular. Feather. Then you've got the, this here, it's just the throat feather, and here another one is called, I think, the, the mallard. And then, I don't know, just the rest of the, the head. So, let me try to replicate that in my drawing. Just making a nice. Uh, I'm exaggerating the shape already at this point, trying to make nice, uh, nice dynamic shape, and I'll probably change them afterwards. If I see, it, like I, I think now it's getting very busy. I'll probably modify that. Okay, this is important: the separation between the head and the the head and um, the body. I guess it's more clear than that. Right. It looks a bit weird. It's okay. Then the mantle where you chart the, the black feather group. So this is it. And yeah, I try to focus on, on this shape. So I see now my my wing was a bit too high. And here I should fold earlier. I don't know, there's something wrong with this shape here. I'll fix that after. Okay. So. Let's do this. Another wing. First thing you do with the wing is uh, blocking, just blocking the wing. So we've got. I think these are the secondary feather group, the primary feather group. That's the greater covered here. And then probably here we have another group, but it doesn't show too much. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna draw them. So I'm just gonna do something like, like this. That's good. Give it a nice shape here. I'm just gonna concentrate on, on this shape rather than and on the, the actual, technically, fine, anatomically correct uh, wing. And then we have like two feathers, three, I'm not sure, that are not part of any grouping. They're called the uh, Alula feathers that just cover everything. They're under the, the coverts and over the primaries. And then basically, I would just randomly 
break them down. It doesn't really matter if it's the correct answer. Well, to me, it doesn't matter if it has the right amount of, uh, like an actual bird drawer would be horrified about my simplification code. I don't know, I'm not, uh, I'm not drawing for like a bird magazine, I'm just making cool looking shit. And I really take a lot of, uh, of liberties with, with proportion. Try to keep the basic to make my bird believable. But frankly, yeah, they're not, they're not real birds. So I call them Berdigos. And there you go. That's the hook wing. So that's the back wing, secondary and primary. So I just really simplify the back wing. It doesn't need to, um, to be too detailed. I don't want it to, uh, to attract too much attention. I want the focus to be on the main trail. Alright, so no. Yeah, I can really do that. And something like this uh, this angle here. I wish this one more up here. And I should probably redraw that, but I'm, I'm trying to save time. Alright. A little bit too far. Let's cheat a bit. Okay. I'll clean, I'll clean that stage. And once I have, uh, this is, I mean, after that round of cleanup, even though I'm, I'm not going to be looking too much at the, at the reference, I'm just trying to, uh, to make interesting dynamic shapes. Example here, I think it's too big. Mm. Let's see that. Mm. I'm not too sure. Yeah, we can. Just creating interesting shape, really. Nice variation in balance. curve here. Basically when I did my first pass I, I, I tried to uh, memorize some of the um, some of the groupings really. So here um, like, uh, some of the main shape I, I tried to keep that in head and I've memorized them and you know I I tried to replicate that more or less. Giving them a nice, um, I don't know, like a, just I'm, I'm focusing on design rather than, than anatomy now. So making everything look cool. 
And I focus on shapes. Basically, oh, that's that's a cool shape here. You know, it looks like this is a nice shape. This one not so much. It's boring. It's just simple general direction. I'm gonna have to review that after. But yeah, I like this shape. I like this shape. This shape is cool. This one as well. It's just locking fit like uh, uh, shapes into into each other. Trying to make them look as attractive as possible. A little triangle there. Secondary back filler, primary back filler. I just block the two. I don't even show the um, the um, the separate feather at this point. I just block the wing into well uh, for the back wing. I mean, I don't want it to um, to attract too much attention over the the front uh, wing. So I just make the two groupings, and that's it. And Let's see. No, I guess I'm probably. I'm just gonna. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not happy with this, so I'm going to rework. I'm gonna keep my reference this time. Let's see what I can improve. Because it has some. It's some nice natural. Natural dynamic shape that I can really use. I'm exaggerating, but still trying to. I guess I went too far in, in my shape exaggeration before, so now I'm, I'm, I'm just like, yeah, maybe, maybe I should go back and uh, just look how it actually was. <laughs> So low, yeah. I always have issues with this shape. Just me. No, it doesn't work. I'm not gonna obsess. When I, when I think something doesn't work, I just I just switch to um to another shape and come back to it afterward. It's pointless to you know have a couple of trials. If it works, fine. If it doesn't work. Just do something else, go come back to it after. Or you just, um, I don't know. Well, I have a tendency to get lost and obsess about one single shape when, I mean, screw it, it's not about a single shape, it's about the whole drawing. Probably if you get all the shape around, around the one that's that's dragging you and keeping you back well, I, would, well, I mean, once you have that, it'd be easy to. Uh, God, I hate that, that white shape here, even on the bird, I think it's fucking unattractive, so how to deal with that? Weird. <laughs> okay. 
shit. Well, I'm not gonna have to split it, like I said. Um, no. Always together. Let's shift. Yeah, that's, that's better. And we Okay, now it's starting to. Uh, I'm starting to have this uh, this flow down. I, li I like the way it's coming. Like all the curves flow into each other. It's making sense to me. Back a little bit. Curve that way. And let's see. Yeah, just uh, like, I mean, any um, living thing has a natural flow, and this is what I'm trying to um, to get here. Like, it doesn't matter if it's if the proportion are right, as long as, as the all the curves work, and the curves and the shape work with each other, basically, they just flow into one another. That's what gives um, uh, the impression of, of whole to the, to the, to being a, like, one piece, one whole to the, to the drawing. Right, no? I guess I'm just gonna save that in case I might crunch. Let's see, what did I miss? Okay, here there's a separation between uh, this shape and that shape. I need to somehow manage to represent in a, an attractive manner. I, I just don't really like it. Creating a dead shape here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to get rid of it. I guess I could just glue the thing. Yeah, that works. Okay. So I could clean this up, and I would make a yeah, I would make a cool bird. It's almost um. Well, I mean, there are exaggerations, I have to get a lot of liberties, but it's uh, it's still uh, quite close from uh, how great I do on my reference. Fine, it's good. The proportion are, are like, I don't know, 70% uh, <laughs> correct, let's say. No, not correct, but like almost, they're almost uh, like the real life, but it's a bit fatter, I, I change the curve, I change the areas, but it's just almost the same dimension. Basically, my, my next step now is just to go completely crazy and uh, and really just cutify the shit a little bit. I guess I'll, 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 I'll clean two birds, I'll clean this one later, and then and then I'll also make uh, my exaggerated bird, let's see. Right, so I usually 
Sim, fé. Tem que ligar. Ai, Vega. Tá igraia, meu Deus. Nem tá fechado, não tem tempo. Okay, like that. Yeah, like the Sturgis, buddy. I'm experimenting here. I might just scrap this drawing if I see I went too far. But it's nice to, to just, you know, experiment, see what comes out of it. Okay, at this point, yeah, I've memorized the shape basically through my my previous passes. And I'm using the the reference drawing, part the drawing that I've done uh, under it, but I remember how it is. I really like the C shape that we had at the beginning, so it was the base of the whole um, of the whole bird really what gave him character, so I'm gonna try to respect that and have that flow. Even though I liked the bigger head that I made here, I feel this would be pushing it a bit too far and not, not respect the, I'm gonna hide this, this is just pulling me. At this point, yeah, yeah, I don't want to see the, the the original picture. I just want to make it cute, and um, I should have memorized all the main uh, characteristic of this bird by now. So I, I'll just use my uh, my memories to replicate it. It's kind of like this. Yeah, that's cool. I'll go with this. You see the amount of... Uh, I mean, some people think that you, when you draw, you just arrive at the, fi the, the final result right away. But you like, see how many rough I make? It's just... I don't know. I just refine every time. And the new one, refine over, refine over each time, change proportion, refine those. And sometimes I have, like, I don't know, for a drawing that looks very simple, it's like, oh, look, the guy just... Made this cute little drawing in like, you know, five, ten lines. It must have taken him like, I don't know, two, three minutes. Well, fuck no. I mean, I, I'm really, the simpler the drawing, the more refinement it went through. So, usually simpler shapes are much harder to, um, to arrive to. Unless if you're like a fucking genius, I really dislike you. Yeah, some people have this ability to, you know, draw perfectly. Like from the first uh, pass. And I detest that. <laughs> so I have to put so much work in my, in my work, well, in my drawings. 
at this okay at this point i'm i'm trying to uh, i'm gonna probably clean up at the next stage so i'm trying to um to be a bit less messy like i'm, I'm erasing I'm, I'm i'm usually against uh erasing but i feel that in this stage it's important to uh to get my line as um, as clean as possible So when I when I draw a line like this, I'm not really focusing on the line, but rather on the shape that I'm creating. And I try to maximize the the attractiveness attractiveness of these shapes. See here, remember you had like a, the, around the eyes there were the what's it called again? The the the, the orbital feathers. So I'm gonna. Try to put this orbital feather there. But then again, I'm feeling that shape, I can do that. No, okay, let's, again, I see it doesn't work. I don't delve on it. I just go to, I switch to something that I know works. And then I'll come back to it. Don't do styling things that don't work and then hold your breath. Just do it. So let's do something else. It worked last time. Okay. I always try to pull. Hmm, there's weird stuff happening there. I'll, 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 I'll correct that after. This is not gonna be my last drop, I think. Okay. So. This is where. The, the cover feather. I forgot to keep the name. Face where I had an issue. Yeah, I don't. You know, there's something that doesn't work here. So. Ah, no, that's fuck it. Alright, there's a lot of uh, lines going on here. I want to see. Now I'm going to put back my original drawing and see what I did. What I did wrong. Mm -hmm. I guess this line is like redundant. Because this line is too big, it works as well. Could be this one as well. Let's try to make this one come higher. But 
Chris Knight the Shade. And then Then I feel this shape here now is a bit uh, boring. So what I could do change that curve to minimize shape. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're getting there. Could you isolate? Okay, but I think that's a nice balance. I'm just gonna keep the still the even though I'm I'm completely um, deviating from uh, from my original drawing, it's still nice to have the reference. See the pose there where we're getting very weird. Like it didn't make sense to have one there because it's hidden by the body really. So I don't know. Just you have to check back from time to time to your original uh, reference and just ask yourself, yeah, <laughs> if you bridge it too far, there or or is that still uh, believable? Because that's the thing at this point, like, it, it only needs to be believable. But I don't know, it's still something about this curve and it's a natural one. Yeah. So maybe it needs to go more like this. So it feels like a hole. Okay. Let's see. Does that work? I think that works. Yeah, let's clean this up. And then I'll clean up the 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 other one. I mean I'll clean this one up. And I don't think that's level four, no? Level five? This one. So I clean this one and this one. So we have the the completely exaggerated version and the version that's more or less uh, close to the original reference. Okay, so when I clean up, create a new layer and. So when you clean up, you just want to go very close and just try to do, oh, that's a bit too close, try to do nice um, one shot line that have a lot of personality. Just before you, you do your line, you really, you know, you have to know where you're going to start and where you're going to end. Like I, I have it very clear that like where my lines go basically. When I when I clean up, I know a lot of people draw like this. 
It allows you to make very precise lines, but it's not one line, it's just a, a, like a combination of, of a lot of different lines with different personalities to just make one line that should have its, its own, uh, I don't know, beginning and intensity. It's just I mean, it's super important to, uh, to one shot your line. It really gives, I guess, a lot of confidence to your drawing. That's what you want. I mean, you don't feel that kind of shit. Like it's it's really what gives uh, strength and personality to your to your art. If you need to do this, I mean, it's, I don't know. You're not really sure what you're doing, and it feels in the in the general place. I don't know. Then again, I know a lot of uh, very talented artists that, that draw like that, and and they just yield spectacular result, result, results. Result. So maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Again. I'm not telling you this is how you should draw, this is just what, what works for me. And uh, everybody should find a way. Well, I should find their technique to find a way that works best for them. I think a rare designer actually jumps like that, so who the fuck am I to... Uh, to criticize his craft, he just draws way better than I do. Just, I guess I come from animation. In animation, we really focus on a on single line. Like every line really needs to have its, its personality, and probably because of tattooing as well. Like when you tattoo, you want. You want to avoid having pickups, so basically every time you you take your uh, your needle of the skin, I need to um, put it back in to continue a line. It it just really increases the probability that you're gonna have a little ink. Uh, how to say this? A little splotch of ink in the skin. <laughs> so we really focus on uh, trying to put our line in in, in one go. I guess my animation experience and, and tattoo is what made me uh, obsessed about doing one shot line. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. But I just know I like it. I like to work this way. Again, it's really important to correct um, things as you go, I think, and, and to connect all your lines. Already said that in a previous video, but I think it's worth repeating. Like really, what making sure all your lines are connect. There's no. I don't know how to say this. That there's no um, like little errors in your, in your, the, the way your line connects, or like you know, let's say like things like that. For example, people probably won't see it. But they will feel it. Like if you leave something like that, like on, I mean, in, in the bigger scope of things, it's not that important if everything is, is if the rest is right. But I think people really feel it, and your drawing doesn't look very, um, very professional if you leave things in there. It just looks, it just feels amateur and uh, and like. You know, it just shows that you don't, you don't care, and people even that don't don't see it, I think they feel it. it. Just reflects on the piece as a whole. I kind of like all those those shapes it's real nicely between each other. Like, see here, it's fine. It's not a, an error, but it really should just go like this. Right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I realize this is so anal, but I don't know, I really, it's really important to me. Not here, like this line actually connects with this line. I'm trying to give up, make all lines and shape work with each other. So like this line here, it looks like it's just a random line, but actually it's connected to, to this one. It just follows the flow of this line to create actually this shape that's dynamic. 
It's like, have we created shapes we we get shapes when I draw like stretching lines? Yeah, that is the case. But then this language is just so weird. I need a, a larger tablet. This is gonna be one of my uh, next thing is buying. Okay, this this is such an old tablet. Like I bought this one almost uh, ten years ago. It's a uh, Cintiq, and at the time, Cintiq had only I paid fortune for this shit. I think it was worth like a, more than a thousand euros. Like ten years ago. Yeah, because Cintiq had the, uh, the monopoly on, uh, on touch screen. On display tablet, I mean, not touch screen. It's not touch screen at all, actually, what am I saying? And yeah, Cintiq would just, in this, this great quality. Is, I've been using this uh, intensively for, for a decade now. And it works just the same way it worked the first day I, I got it. It's like Cintiq do amazing tablet. But fuck their expenses. Cintiq is Wacom, by the way. And nowadays, they've got a few very decent comp competitor, com competitor, competitors. And their main one, I think, no, they have one competitor. Let's be honest here. That's uh, Xpand. And Xpand, do, they do amazing tablets for uh, a fraction of the price of the, the Wacom tablet. That's always the one when people ask me uh, which tablet to buy. Yeah, you can never go wrong with a, with a Wacom or a Cintiq, but you'll pay like a fucking high price for it. I would just advise you to get an expander. Like maybe it's gonna be. Yeah, I mean, the Wacoms are probably better, but the Cintiqs are something, uh, the, the Xpen are something like. 95% as good as the as, as the, the Wacom. I mean, if, if you're honest, I don't think I would I would feel the difference. So is it really worth it to pay? I don't know, three times the price for I don't know, five percent uh, increase in quality in the tablet. I don't think so. And probably the new uh, x are much better than the one I'm using here. Alright, so let's see. Where am I? Ooh, I really don't like this. These two lines here are just, just suck. No, I need to get here. Sorry. Oh crap. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, I really don't like what I'm doing there. This whole shape that I created here is just so dead. Like, there's no flow. No, it's not a dynamic shape. I need, I need to get rid of that. It's just really not attractive. So, how am I gonna fix this? Like this? Like this? Hmm. No, I need to do something. Right. That's a, this is a nice, nice, I mean, it's more dynamic, it's not the, the, the most dynamic shape, but there is a nice variation of, uh, you know, it's thicker here, thinner here, it's a nice angle, you know, a bit in the, into this curve, and I don't like this one, it's too crowded, but yeah. Primary feathers. Alright, let's bring it back to them. Mm. 
现在是别的人想想买给他，没钱那么多，怎么结婚？真的是悲惨，实在是好可怜。See what I mean? Like I'm, my design is very, looks very simple when it's done, but that means that every single、uh, line needs to be thought of and 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 be perfect. Ah、uh, shit! I don't like this. Um, screw it over. See, this is creating a, a dead shit. I don't like it. Need to be rid of it. Close it. We're doing something with it. Shit, drawing is very. You say complex? We're not complex in a in a. It is difficult. Just yeah, if there's a lot of line and a lot of little details, it's very easy to hide mistakes. Basically, whether your drawing is is very simple and has a few lines, it's you can't hide that. You just need to get everything right. Okay, I like that. Not my original design. Yeah, I'm trying to give a feel of like this angle here. Right. Yeah, I should feel it. Put a couple of feathers there. Right. Well, I'm trying to keep my video. My, my idea was to keep my videos around 25 minutes, but I mean, they always end up being hours long. <laughs> I need to train on that. Well, that's what I'm doing now. I don't think this video will ever be published. It's just I'm training to talk and draw. Something I'm really not used to. Usually, when I do, when I draw. All my attention is on the line, and to be honest, this is how you should do it. Like when you, when you draw, if you want your drawing to be as best as possible, just only don't think, just focus on on what you're doing, on your line, and nothing else. I even stopped.、Uh, well, at least I like to listen to music when I draw, but I don't li listen to music with um with lyrics basically because unconsciously it might seem impossible not to listen to it. So basically, what happens is like you divert, I guess, brain power from drawing to、uh, like interpreting the lyrics, and you don't have your full attention、uh, dedicated to your drawing. Finish it properly. At this point, I do、um, when I get the lines down. I do a power,、uh, a power outline. So by that I mean I'll probably go a little bit thicker, and、uh, it's very thick. Okay, that's too much. Do a little close, and I create. Outline. I do this. Okay, if, if you're trying to do、um, natural, well, anatomically correct,、uh, real drawings, just never do this because this instantly gives it a very、um, graphic feel and just yeah, I think it takes away the realism of、uh, your piece, which in my case is, is to me is what I want to do. I want it to look、um, graphic and not not realistic. So when you build、um, 
you drop or your first line just draw a fact and uh and uh well okay i, I guess like the rougher I, I draw the more further away i am the more zoomed out i am and if i need precision like here basically i mean i, I can interpret anything my line needs to be exactly where on on the the previous line so i can't um deviate from that my previous days like when i was cleaning up i still have some freedom basically like my line needs to be more or less where my previous line were but not exactly so i can i can i don't need to be zoom zoomed in as much and for the rough like i really I don't care, like, I, I'm just, just, the line can be wherever the fuck I want, so I can be as zoomed out. <laughs> I think I'm making myself clear here. I, basically, what I'm trying to say is that if you want precision, zoom in the maximum. And focus on it. On your line. If you want cool looking lines, zoom out and draw fast. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I try to um, break down some, well, separate some, some elements. So I want this line to be thicker because it's the separation between the body and, and the back um, wing. And then I want this line to be thick because the wing is over the body. So I, basically I'm creating an extra arm. I'm creating depth with the, with this. Okay. And probably the, the head should be let's see, I'm not too sure about this one. I'll try. There's a lot of trial and error in my in my journey now. As you have noticed by now. But yeah, it's, it should be like that here. Hmm. Don't know I don't like that. What if I follow this line? Well, I like this. So, reach those legs. Final verdito. The next step is to color it, but I'm, I'm leaving that for now. For another, another video. Okay, so. Now, should I? Should I clean this one up as well? I said I was gonna do it, but I'm already at, at over an hour, so... Nah, I'm not gonna do it. At the end of the day, what I wanna do is... Uh, perditos, so... Yeah. Just wanna see, like, more or less realistic... Um, well, not realistic, but birds with, with proper proportion. Basically, go, go on my super rare and, and check for the bird on gold uh, series. Those are birds that, well, I'll take on my own uh, interpretation, I guess, but. But they're more. Uh, uh, they're more uh, I'm more than not totally correct. And let's see. Alright, so. That's it for today. I don't know if I'll release this video, but it will be playing on the. On the Skull Discord uh, replay channel. Right? Ciao, thanks for watching. And. Uh, Damn